First of all, I'd really take some thought to like, how can I provide advice that would be most helpful? And I'm not sure I've given enough thought to, to, to that to, to give you the best possible answer. But I think, um, I think certainly uh, being focused on something that you're confident will have high value to someone else, um, and just being really rigorous in making that assessment, um, mm -hmm. because people are, tend, tend to, a natural human tendency is wishful thinking. Um, mm -hmm. So a, a challenge for entrepreneurs is to say, well, what's the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking, sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream that right. doesn't actually have merit? And it's, it's, that, is a, it, that is a really difficult thing to, to tell. You, can you tell the difference between those two things? Right. You know? So you need to be sort of very rigorous um, in, in your self-analysis. Uh, self um, I think certainly extremely tenacious. Uh, and um, and then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. That's and then a lot of work. That, that, that all those things improve the odds of success. Okay. Um, Great. I mean, if, if 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 other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if uh, you're doing the same thing, you know that. In, in one year, you will achieve what they achieve. You, you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. How do you think about making a decision when everyone tells you this is a crazy idea? Or where do you get the internal strength to do that? Well, first of all, I'd say I actually think I, I, think I fear, feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough, that you, you do it in spite of the fear. So speaking so of important that, things. Like people shouldn't think, I, 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 I should, people shouldn't think, well, I feel fear about this and therefore I shouldn't do it. Um, it's normal to, be, to feel fear. Like you'd have to, there'd have to be something mentally wrong <laughs> if you didn't feel fear. Um, so you just feel it and let the importance of it drive you to do it anyway. Yeah, you know, actually, something that can be helpful is fatalism, uh, to some degree. Um, if you just if you just accept the probabilities, um, then that diminishes fear. Uh, so, um, when starting SpaceX, I thought the odds of success were less than ten percent, um, and I just accepted that actually probably I would just lose lose everything. Um, but that maybe we'd make some progress if we could just move the ball forward, even if we died, maybe. Some other company could pick up the baton and move and keep moving it forward, um, so that would still do some good. Um, yeah, same with Tesla. I thought you know, the odds of a car company succeeding were extremely low. One does have to be focused on the short term of money coming in when creating a company, because otherwise the company will, will die. So that the I think that a lot of times people think like creating companies going to be fun. I would say it's not, it's really not that fun. I mean, there are periods of fun and there are, there are periods of where it's, where it's just awful. Um, and particularly if you're the CEO of the company, um, you actually have a distillation of all the worst problems in the company. Um, so there's no point in spending your time on things that are going right. So you only spend on things, on your time on things that are going wrong. And, and there are things that are going wrong that other people can't, can't take care of. So you're like the worst. You have a filter for the crappest problem in the company, <laughs> the most pernicious and painful problem. Um, so I wouldn't say it's, it's it, I think you have to feel quite compelled to do it um, and have a, a fairly high pain threshold. And there's a friend of mine who, who says like starting a company is like staring into the abyss and, and eating glass. Um, and there's some truth to that. Um, the staring into the abyss part is that you're going to be constantly facing the, the um, extermination of the company. Because uh, most, most startups fail. Uh, it's like 90%, arguably 99% of, of startups fail. So, uh, so you, you, that, that's the staring into the abyss part. You're constantly saying, OK, this, if, if, if I don't get this right, the company will die. Um, it's going to be quite stressful. Quite stressful. And, and then, um, the eating glass part is, you've got you've got to do, you've got to do the problems. You've got to you've got to work on the problems that the company needs you to work on, not the problems you want to work on. And so that the that's you end up working on 
problems that, that uh, you'd really wish you weren't working on. And so that's the eating glass part. Um, and that goes on for a long time. So how do you keep your focus on the big picture when you're constantly faced with, we could be out of business in a month? Well, it's, it's just a very small percentage of mental energies on the, on the big picture. Like, you know, you know, you know where you, you're generally head, heading for, and, and the, the actual path is gonna be some sort of zigzaggy thing in that direction. Um, you try not to deviate too far from the path that, that, that you wanna be on, but you're gonna have to do that to some degree. Um, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to diminish the. I mean, I think the prod, the profit motive is a is a is a good one if the rules of an industry are properly set up. So there's nothing fundamentally wrong with profit. In fact, profit just means that uh, people are paying you more for the, the, whatever you're doing than you're spending to create it. That's a good thing. <laughs> and, and if if you're not if, if that's not the case, then you'll be out of business and rightfully so. Because you're, you're you're not adding enough value. I would uh, definitely advise people who are starting a company to expect a, a, a long period of quite high difficulty. Yeah. Um, but I mean, as long as uh, people stay super focused on creating the absolute best product or service that really delights their end customer, I, if they stay focused on that, then um, if, if you basically if, if if you get it such that your customers want you to succeed, mm. then then you probably will. All right, uh, you have to focus on the customer and delivering for them. Yeah, make yeah. sure if your customers love you, you will, you, your odds of success are dramatically higher. But when you're building something new, there's going to be mistakes, yeah. um, and it's important to to recognize those mistakes, acknowledge them, and take corrective action. Yeah. Um, and the success of a company is very much more about. How quick are you to fix the mistakes? Mm. Not will you make mistakes? Or, or admit the mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if you see the difference between a startup that is successful and one that is not, and it's mm. because the successful one, they both made mistakes, but the successful one recognized the mistakes, fixed them very quickly, and the, the unsuccessful one tries to deny that the mistakes exist. You know, extremely smart people are sometimes quite arrogant because they believe in what they believe in, right? And so when they face criticism, it's less likely to admit, you know, they, they can make mistakes. Uh, was that in your case? I learned it when I was doing, uh, when I was studying physics. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, you know, in, in physics, you're taught to always question yourself. You're taught to always assume that you're wrong, not assume that you're right. And you have to prove yourself not, not wrong. Um, and so I think that, that, that physics framework is really where, where I learned it. And, um, it's very effective for, under, for learning counterintuitive things that aren't obvious. Mm -hmm. So you are very famous in saying that failure is actually an option. And if you're not sure. failing, like, that means you're not innovative enough. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I like failure. I mean, who mm -hmm. likes failure? It's terrible. Yeah. But if you only do things that are certain to succeed, then you're only going to be doing very obvious things. Did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. When I interview someone to work at the company, it would be to ask them to tell me about the problems that they worked on and how they solved them. And if, if someone was really the, the person that solved it, they'll be able to answer multiple levels. They'll be able to go down to the brass tacks. And if they weren't, they'll get stuck. And then you can say, oh, this person was not really the person who solved it, because anyone who struggled hard with a problem never forgets. You've got to make sure that whatever you're doing is a great product or service. It has to be really great. And I go back to what I was saying earlier where um, if you're a new company, I mean, unless it's like some new industry or, or new market that, if it's an untapped market, or then, then uh, you have more ability to, you, this, this, the standard is lower for your product or service. But if you're entering anything where there's an existing marketplace against large entrenched competitors, then your product or service needs to be much better than theirs. It can't be a little bit better because then you put yourself in the shoes of the consumer and they say, why would you buy it as a consumer? You're always gonna buy the trusted brand unless there's a big difference. So a lot of times, uh, you know, entrepreneur will come up with something which is only slightly better. Um, and it's, it's not, it can't just be slightly better. It's gotta be a lot better. If you're creating a company or if you're joining a company, uh, the most important thing is to uh, 
is to attract great people. So either be with, join a group that's amazing that you really respect, or if, you, if you're building a company, you've got to gather great people. I mean, all a company is is a group of people that have gathered together to create a product or service. And so, depending upon how talented and hardworking that group is, and the degree to which they are focused uh, cohesively in, in a good direction, that will determine the success of the company. So, do everything you can to to gather great people. Uh, if, if you're creating a company. We're really liking what you do. What, whatever area that you get into, um, given that you know, even if you're, if you're the best of the best, there's always a chance of failure. So I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Um, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. If you like what you're doing, you think about it even when you're not working. I mean, you're, it'll just, it, it's, it's something that your mind is drawn to. Um, and, and if you don't like it, you just really can't make it work, I think. Depending upon how well you want to do, and particularly if you're starting a company, you need to work super hard. So what, what does super hard mean? Um, well, when my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA. And uh, we're, we're so hard up, we had one computer. So the, the, the website was up during the day. Uh, and I was coding at night, seven days a week, all the time. Um, and I, I uh, sort of briefly had a girlfriend in that period, and in order to be with me, she had to sleep in the office. So uh, work hard, like, it, it, I mean, every waking hour. That's, that's the, the thing I would, I would say, if, if you, particularly if you're starting a company. Um, and I mean, if you do simple math, you say like, okay, if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, uh, you'll get twice as done, as much done in the course of a year as the, as, uh, the other company. So many people tried to talk me out of starting a right company. It was it was crazy. One good friend of mine collected a whole series of videos of rockets blowing up and made me watch those. He just didn't want me to lose all my money. We're doing these things that uh, seem unlikely to succeed, and we've been fortunate, and at least thus far, they have succeeded. Now is the time to take risk. You don't have kids. As you get older, your obligations increase. So, you, the, and once you have a family, you start taking risk not just for yourself but for your family as well. It gets much harder to uh, do things that might not work out. Um, so now is the time t to do that uh, before you before you have those obligations. So I would I would encourage you to take risks now. Do something bold. Um, you won't regret it. You focus on on signal over noise. Uh, a lot of companies get, get confused. They, they spend money on things that don't actually make the product better. For example, at, at Tesla, we've, we've never spent any money on advertising. Um, we, we put all of the money into R&D and, and manufacturing and design to try to make the car as good as possible. Um, and uh, I, I think that's, that's, that's the way to go. For, for any given company, just c c keep thinking about are these efforts that people are, are expanding, are they resulting in a better product or service? And if they're not, stop those efforts. How did you figure you were going to start a car company and be successful at it? Well, I, I didn't really think Tesla would be successful. I thought we would most likely fail. But I thought that we at least uh, could address the false perception that people had that an electric car had to be ugly and slow and and boring like a golf cart. But you say you didn't expect the company to be successful? Then why try? If something's important enough, you should try, even if you, the probable outcome is failure. With Tesla, your goal has been to make a better car. Mm -hmm. And you've done that with an electric vehicle that people covet, that has quite a cult following, um, that's upgradable. Um, but you also want to achieve, and your turn of phrase is very nice, um, or, or try to achieve this platonic ideal of a car, right, to reach uh, yeah. perfection. So what does the perfect car look like? Well, I mean, I do, I do use that phrase with our engineering and design team that aspirationally um, we're in pursuit of the platonic ideal of the perfect car. Yeah. Um, and um, who knows what that looks like actually, but it's, mm -hmm. I, you, you want to try to make every element of the car um, as as flawless as possible. Um, now there will always be, you know, some um, degree of imperfection, but um, try to minimize that um, and, and create a car that is just delightful in every way. Um, and I think if you do that, then 
the, the rest kind of takes care of itself. Doing business sometimes requires, you know, persistence and sometimes yeah. could be very boring. Uh, do you have the same fun from innovation as from business, running a business? Um, well, I mean, or would I guess, you rather to be yeah. just an innovator, engineer, instead of a business owner or runner? I mean, I'd love to just do innovation work and just do engineering. Yeah. Um, but you raise a good point because, you know, a lot of life in general, in any job, there's like you have to do your chores. Mm -hmm. You know, there's... Because no, nobody else is, can do that for you, right? Well, it's, yeah, to be, <laughs> I think to be successful at almost anything, you can't, it, you have to do the tough stuff and as well as the enjoyable stuff. You have to do the boring stuff as well as the non-boring stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't do your chores, then bad things will happen. But if they don't do the things that they don't like to do, then the company will be in trouble. Yeah. Like you have to, t you, you basically, like it's more fun to cook the meal than to, 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 to clean the dishes. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you need to clean the dishes. <laughs> you need to do both. Yes, you need to do both. CEO of SpaceX, and you, you've said that your ultimate goal is to get humankind to Mars. Um, I, I've heard your response to the question, but these guys need to hear it. Why is Mars important? Why does Mars matter? Sure. Well, I think the it's it's really a fundamental decision we need to make um, as a civilization. Uh, it, you know, what, what kind of future do we want? Do we want a future where we are forever confined to one planet until some eventual extinction event, however far in the future that might occur, um, or do we want to become a multi-planet species um, and and then ultimately be out there among the stars and be among many planets, many star systems? And I think the latter is a far more exciting and inspiring future than the former. Um, and, and Mars is the next uh, natural step. Um, in fact, it's the only planet we really have a shot at, at establishing a self-sustaining city on. Um, and, uh, and I think once we do establish such a city, there will be a strong forcing function for the improvement of spaceflight technology that will then enable us to uh, establish colonies elsewhere in the solar system and ultimately extend beyond, the, beyond our solar system. Um, and, um, and so there's the defensive reason of uh, protecting the future of humanity, ensuring that the light of consciousness is not extinguished uh, should some calamity befall Earth. Uh, but also, and, and that, that's the defensive reason, but personally I find the more, the, what, what um, get, gets me more excited is, is the fact that this would be an incredible adventure. Mm. I mean, it would be like the greatest adventure ever. Mm. Mm. Um, and it, it would be exciting and inspiring. And there need to be things that excite and inspire people. Yeah. You have to be, you know, reasons why you get up in the morning. It can't just be solving problems. It's got to be, yeah, something, something great is going to happen in the future. Yeah, uh, we talked about this at length yesterday. It's, it's not an exit strategy or a backup plan right. for humankind <laughs> no. when Earth fails. Right. It's also to inspire people on Earth, yeah. right, and to transcend and to think, to go beyond our. Um, mental limits of what we think we can achieve. Right, I mean, you think of sort of how incredible the Apollo program was, and just, yeah. I mean, if, if you ask anyone and say, name, name some of humanity's greatest achievements of yeah. the 20th century, the, the Apollo program, landing on the moon, would, would make, in many if not most places, be number one. Uh, 2001, with just, just touring a friend of mine, and he asked me, he asked me what I was gonna do after PayPal, and I thought, well, you know, I was wondering, like, um, I'd like to get involved in space, but I, I just didn't think there was anything I could do as an individual. Um, and uh, but I was curious as to when we, when we, NASA would be sending a, a, a team to Mars, because that was always going to be the thing to do after the moon. Um, I figured that, that there'd be some plan, and I'd just go to the website and you know, I could read the you know the schedule. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> then Mars occurs. So, oh yeah, it's like okay, 2017, good. Okay, um, but, but actually there wasn't anything on on the website and. Um, <laughs> or at least I thought, like, am I, can I not find it? Like, what's going on here? Um, and is it secret? I don't know. Uh, so, but it turned out that, um, that NASA had done a study on what it would cost to send, to, to do a um, manned Mars mission, and uh, this was under Bush the first. And uh, he, in his post, he asked for a 90-day study shortly after uh, taking office. And NASA came back with a $500 billion price tag. And he said, okay, maybe not. Billions uh, of B. That's yeah. when $500 mm -hmm. billion dollars was serious money um, <laughs> uh, yeah, for the government. Um, so, uh, so so then that got totally shelved, and it was like you were not allowed to talk about any kind of crewed mission to Mars at NASA. Hmm. Um, anyway, so I, I, but I thought, well, uh, if I can do something that would 
um, galvanize public interest, that, and, and then that public interest would translate to uh, additional appropriations for NASA and increase the, their budget, then, then maybe they could do it. So, the, so actually what I sort of thinking I would do is uh, send a, a small greenhouse to the surface of Mars with seeds and dehydrated gel, and then upon landing, hydrate the gel, or grow the plants, and the public tends to respond to precedents and superlatives. So this would be the furthest that life's ever traveled, the first life on Mars. I tried to, try to figure out how to do this with the proceeds that I had from, from PayPal. Um, and uh, I was able to figure out how to get the cost of the, the spacecraft down and the communications and, and, and the um, little greenhouse and everything. But the one thing I couldn't compress was the cost to launch. Because there are only a few options. And the US options are way too expensive. Um, and so I ended up going to Russia three times to try to buy uh, the, the biggest ICBM in the Russian nuclear fleet. Um, That's where I'd start, yeah. Yeah. Go big that or go was, home, uh, right? Yeah. I mean, okay. You know, <laughs> they, they, um, it, it was, uh, there were some strange trips, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's like virtually, like you can buy any, it's a very capitalist society in <laughs> some ways. Uh, um, so I actually did negotiate a deal to, to buy two of the ICBMs minus the nukes. Um, and, um, but, but I came to the conclusion after that third trip that um, it, it wouldn't really matter. Like if, if we, I actually came to the conclusion that my initial premise was, was, was wrong um, because I actually think there's, there's a tremendous amount of will uh, in the American population particularly uh, to, uh, to explore. Um, uh, the United States, you know, maybe more than any other country, um, is a distillation of the human spirit of exploration. Um, and it's really fundamental to psyche. So if people think there's a way, I think it would actually get a lot of support. Mm -hmm. um, but but if they need, it, it can't be just banging your head against the wall. You've got to believe that this can be done without mm -hmm. breaking the federal budget. Um, so uh, that's when I said, okay, well, is there some way to affect the cost of space transport? And, um, and, is, or, and, and so I, I got together with a group of people over a series of Saturdays just to just try to understand, is there something super ex fundamentally super expensive about rockets, or, or can the cost be substantially improved? Um, and um, I had, we had a bunch of those kind of brainstorming sessions, and I couldn't see, I couldn't see any fundamental obstacle to improving the cost of rockets, so mm -hmm. that, that's when I started SpaceX. Like, I'll just build them myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, but like I said, at that point, I would say the, pr the probability of success was definitely less than 50%. I thought it would most likely mm -hmm. not succeed. Um, but it was worth a try.